Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Innovation and Insights. This is the first interview of the year 2024, and I have an amazing founder with me today, Garima Bharadwaj. Garima is the co-founder and the CTO of Enlight. This is a company, rather a startup, at the forefront of driving tech innovation in the realm of sustainable building management. Garima brings a very interesting perspective. She was one of the early founding members at OYO and the Moms Company. So she brings this inside view from the world of startups. And now that she has pivoted to a more deep tech kind of an opportunity in the facilities management realm of things, uh, I thought this will be an amazing area to explore into. And I've known Garima for a number of years now. Uh, love the passion and love how they're building and life. So, you know, let's uh, bring her over. Uh, Garima, thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much, Himang, for this. It actually means a lot because you have been a relentless mentor to me and uh, to Enlight. So I am more than happy to be here to be talking more about what you and I have been talking about as Enlight, which even more people who are listening to here might uh, think of some value. Thank you. So let's start with a very simple, I guess, home run question for you, which is that what does Enlight Research actually do? Got it. So um, what we are doing is um, doing something really boring. Uh, let's talk about a term called BMS or a building management system. Now, I know of BMS because my company makes a BMS. But if you ask a common person, most of them might not know or the best answer you could get is a battery management system. Agreed. Because this is what people consider of it as. But now imagine all of us go to offices, we go to hotels, uh, we go to airports, we go to so many commercial establishments. But not for a moment does anybody think that there is good AC, or I'm complaining about the AC in my office, uh, brilliant ambience of lights, elevators are working, the water is there in the tanks, um, I'm getting it in the bathroom. How is all of this happening? This is not my house. I'm not turning things on and off. I don't see a switch anywhere. I don't see people running around for switches. So how is this all managed at the end of the day? Well, that is what a building management system does. It's a centralized automation system to capture every part of electrical and electromechanical equipment of a building to one centralized place. So while I sit in my office and I feel a gush of nice air, the controls are somewhere centralized. There's nothing in my room which is here. There's not a single switch, not a single switch of light either. This all happens by a building management system. And these were very traditional controls which were created by some legacy Fortune 500 companies. So what we wanted to do is bring about this differentiation into the world of building management system and make it a little more glamorous because apart from the person sitting in the basement of any building, nobody really knows what the MS. So at Enlight, we have created the world's first cloud native and wireless building management system. You know, I would have really appreciated if Enlight was around at my university where I was, uh, you know, doing my, my doctoral research. We, we were in this large, uh, I think square feet wise, it might have been like a 2000 square feet type of uh, just an office space for most of us researchers. And the temperature control was such that on one side, the people or the students who were sitting in the lab, uh, they were always wearing like uh, hoodies and like yeah. Numbers, and the other side was wearing like a t-shirt and shorts. <laughs> true, true. And the temperature control was just horrendous. Like you keep it cool for one side, and you know it's like Siberia and the other. <laughs> and when that side complains, you turn it off, and it's like really we're sweating inside. Never ever. I mean, and for all the cutting edge research that we did, the simplest problem, which was temperature control, could not be solved. <laughs> you put it very rightly because the problem here, Himang, is that first when you think real estate, you're like, this is boring. Who's going to develop a solution in real estate? I've been in OYO and I've been in Momsco, e-commerce and, you know, a fledgling, nice hospitality startup aggregating and creating whatsoever. 
a fintech startup or ed tech startup and real estate like uh, what's the problem you're building a building people are going to stay or live or work out of there so what's the actual problem and actually developers think of it it in the same way okay you know facade is looking good paint is looking nice good sorted done sold so nobody actually thinks of it one that is non glam and now you think of building a centralized automation system for a place which is already nobody's interest you go to a hotel to see rooms are nice food is nice hospitality is nice nobody thinks that acha you know temperature agar 18 degrees hota to zyada acha hota but people complain about it but since you don't know wo hota kaise 18 degrees that's the whole problem so which we see a lot pretty much everywhere what made you discover this problem uh so couple of things one uh, i had a little background with real estate thanks to oyo so i have visited i don't know maybe 1500 or 2000 hotels in india of Whoa. all kinds <laughs> of all kinds from um hotel located at um uh drainage system to the nicest five star hotel just to realize that you know when you visit and you ordered the entire hotel apart from the room the moment you go into seeing the facilities you also realize there is so much more to a hotel like how are people managing their entries inside uh, how are the hvac systems running all the times how is there a surety that if the light trips the ups system or the dgs are going to work like how does that happen but then there are smaller hotels which do not have that so what is the reason why they don't have that so that was a little background and post momsco when i really wanted to start something um it was a very simple thought in my mind that i am not looking to solve my problem that you know i have this problem and i'm going to build the solution mm. and solve my problem i live in a house i'm not also into the facility side of things but is there an aspect in the world right now which is still does not have a solution in which the problem is big enough so you can create a solution that is bigger and with that 2 by 2 matrix the answer was real estate my uh i think my uh, favorite industry i i really like everything about real nice. estate <laughs> because you think of real estate there is there are so many problems you can create 200 different startups just solving real estate ka problems so when that started um what me and my co-founder identified that you know uh, if you look at commercial real estate we don't want to get into home automation there were companies doing it and uh, it is very very customized to somebody's taste and desires of automation so let's look at commercial they waste a lot of energy so when we started the company the idea was how to create solutions which could conserve energy and that time our understanding of conservation of energy was only around that you know if you're sitting in a small zone like i'm sitting in a room right now this is cold let me do a thermal mapping of this small zone and control the temperature there yeah that's how we started the company and we also implemented the solution in a lot of companies the likes of tata wipro cbre and thankfully it was all large companies where these implementations were happening every time we would go they were like ye sab to theek hai aur kya hai tumhare paas and we like yeah yaar matlab this is all what else do you want and they'd be like no you know can you do water also and you are right now at a very zonal view can you manage the whole hvac first of all it took a lot to say hvac and not ac because yeah. you come from a very different background and you're like okay 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 hvac starts from the chiller comes to the duct and what not so i think it was also because of a lot of customers at that point who kept on asking for more and we also realized that we are not solving a problem if we are saying we are doing a zonal thermal mapping and then we are controlling temperature of a zone because if you really want to conserve energy or water or create automation what these people are asking is a building management system but why are they asking why are they not using one since there are large companies like honeywell siemens schneider who make these systems since last 70 80 years so why are they asking us why do they want to do it only to realize at that point uh, that building management systems are a very costly affair um in a building of about 5 lakh square feet you could be spending minimum of 80 lakhs to maximum of 1.5 crores to buy your building management system 
the first time and then you have to pay annually for the different amcs and that's why companies a lot of people don't opt for these systems and that's why smaller establishments 10000 square feet 5000 square feet were asking what more automation can you provide and that is what gave us the thought that okay you know we need to create a bms but not how traditionally it's been created let's uh, step back i think what you said uh, was nice but i think uh, you probably zoomed in or zoomed in <laughs> zoom yeah, yeah. a few of those things which is okay you've seen a lot of these uh, i guess back rooms at these hotels and large buildings uh, you also have a passion for for real estate uh, that you saw these things but from what i understand no one who's like a developer or someone is complaining that my building management is a problem for me hmm. you know they're, they're talking mostly when it comes to real estate they talk of utilization rates they talk of return on investment or hmm. rental yield or whatever other business metrics which are applicable who was complaining about these issues that you like okay there's a there's an addressable market here i'm glad that you asked it like that because i really zoomed in and zoomed out here so the interesting part about bms is that the customer is never the consumer so yeah. the developer is buying spending money but now the developer doesn't care the developer has bought and now there's a user who's a facility manager uh who's a building management systems operator and these guys unfortunately have a very thankless job sitting in the basement of the building looking at one screen the whole day and not even probably understanding what are they seeing on the screen they are just able to differentiate between red and green okay something is working something is not working that's how it is so the person who was buying these systems was buying decent systems now when you buy anything you are assured that it's going to be commissioned completely into my building and it will be automated 100% but uh, traditional building management systems are very complex to understand uh, they are so complex that if i have to tell you that how a building management is programmed for a building for example just to schedule that a building starts at 9 o'clock and ends at 6 pm the programming is called ladder programming not taught anywhere in any college you have to enroll as a technician in one of the itis and learn ladder programming only for this one job because before and after that you will never use it so these are very complicated systems so the people who are the users actually do not know how to commission them somebody from the traditional companies would come and say i have done this 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 but now it's getting too much of a hassle rest i'll do next year next year when he'll come and take the amc uh -huh. from the person so this year i've commissioned only 40% of it so 40% of the 80 lakhs that you've spent on him is commissioned now that person will come next year with the bill and say that now you have to pay 10% and also commissioning of 60% is left so now you tell me what to do this is one part of it second uh building management system traditionally is a very wired device so whatever you want to automate in a building needs to be wired up to that level where the system is kept so if your light is on the 7th floor and your centralized system is at the basement that is the amount of wiring it takes mm. so in a 5 lakh square foot you generally have about 40 kilometers of wiring and uh, wow it's a lot and it's very expensive these wires are specific wires so it costs you around 25% of your total implementation and the other part of it where these people see the data very smartly uh, the traditional guys have only created desktop applications because that requires licenses so if now you and i are going to see it we need two licenses a third person will require a third you just can't open a web yeah. so the more the people the more the licensing fees uh, the better for them and what happens in this entire loop in 2 to 3 years of the first time that a bms is implemented things start conking off one after the other because first of all it was not commissioned entirely second the people who are managing it the operator and the facilities mm. guy they are not the ones who can commission or who can figure out what is it that's going wrong and as the amount keeps getting accrued after 2 3 years they don't even go back to the oems they're like okay jaisa chal raha hai let's just work around this in 5 years 
the system is absolutely down and people come back to manual operations that is when things get escalated at some level so they might then go to their original buyer who will then say but i just spent 80 lakhs five years back now things are not working so you figure out maybe get two people and uh, when we started visiting these buildings we realized in existing building this was a huge problem they were literally operating out of nothing there is a screen which shows nothing there are devices which operate nothing because they are disconnected or they were never commissioned in the first place the licenses or the desktop applications have crashed if they have not been paid for or there's some problem so because of that the facility people had no view and all they wanted is please show me the data even if you can't automate can you just give me something that could be done i already have these things in place is there anything that you can do so this is a huge problem statement for them wow so you collected all these pain points and then uh, i can see how you you started with with one solution which was ac to hvac and <laughs> right and then, and then to the uh, uh, other ones from a customer perspective the facilities person i guess will understand the system from you all and then they would have to make a case for their management to say okay we really need a system like this to help so what what does what do those discussions look like so um, actually we've had these discussions where uh, the facility guy has gone and said that you know nothing is working and i'm not going to name a customer right now but they are one of the largest uh, real estate asset owners in the world not in india and um, because they bought out some uh, properties in distress sale so when they took them out they realized nothing was working and the facility team they knew one thing that they want system which is working because they are not going to be keep five people these are huge areas now when you go to the owner they just ask but why don't you keep two people i really want to understand ye do log kon hai who everybody wants to keep me do log rakh lega to mera kaam ho jayega i am keen on understanding these do log So, <laughs> no, it's a classic problem where, like, have uh, when you don't have any meaningful thing to solve. Sometimes it's tempting to throw warm bodies at a problem. <laughs> you have to think next to it. They'll do something. They'll get you. True. Uh, True. So, correct. So they're like, "I'll keep two people. I'm saying, 'Give me these two people. Give me two people. Why am I running a company? These two people need something because every person is talking about these two people. But um, initially, it was a little hard to explain to them because." Um, anything in a real estate that you can't see at the outset is somewhere you're not willing to put your money in it's not a facade it's not a door it's not a um, uh, some nice fountain or anything like that because that's what sells ideally while people talk a lot about good design automation you can't see that all you can see is maybe the turnstile through which you enter you don't think ac kaise chala like while i'm speaking idhar ka band ho gaya because this is how it's scheduled exactly at 6 o'clock it went off <laughs> but what you can't see it's very difficult to make them a second purchase for that if they've already bought it so what we also started doing is reaching out to a lot of developers and asking them that what would make you buy a product like this this is what we have and uh, this is what you have so these are the things if we introduce our solution into your existing systems which are not working this is the cost benefit and we also reached out to a lot of developers in tier 2 which i would say was the best thing that we did so we went to places like pune madurai coimbatore lucknow and they were more than welcoming they were like oh it's wireless because for us the solution was built differently uh 40 kilometers less wires no licensing much smarter which we'll spoke speak maybe later about but they were very dynamic they were like okay this is something new this is a new tech i am willing to try what we realized in tier one there was still more friction because they are used to a certain service and a certain name and a certain brand but then these guys would be telling the facility managers this is a new company it's a new tech just explore something in smart buildings so i think that term smart buildings really helped us so i want to dive into a bit of your own evolution uh, garima because uh, as much as i've known you i don't think you come from a hard core engineering background and yet now you very admirably head the tech function at enlight so 
what was that transition like which is you know spotting these opportunities to now <laughs> when i hear you talk of the latest jargon as if you know it's yes you know that's <laughs> the at the back of your hand <laughs> I, I would say that more than the product growth i have seen my growth as you rightly said it so i was at oyo and i was doing like bd sales pnl marketing you ask of it i knew the rack rates of hotel at the back of my hand i knew which uh, toiletries were not provided and then when i was at momsco it was a fmcg company so i knew okay you know this shampoo is really good and this tea is good for pregnancy and this is good for baby care and uh, with enlight i'm like okay uh, what happened <laughs> i <laughs> I, I did all this for what because when we started so it was energy and we had a bunch of uh, really smart people uh, who were doing the phd in iit bombay at that point who were working on energy conservation a little differently uh, but we hired those people and we started working with them over time to realize that you know uh, people will always deliver what you ask them to do but you have to ask them the right thing to do i can't expect them that one fine day they come in and they're like okay you know this is new thing that we're going to work on which means now oh damn i will really have to revisit my engineering days which i never wanted to i did an mba so that i did not have to go back to engineering but um, what actually worked well for me were two things uh, the onset of covid uh, gave us all a lot of time there was a lot of breather because the only thing which was not working was the real estate offices shut <laughs> hotels shut pretty much every commercial real estate was shut and i got through colcom the program now why did these two things help with colcom i just found somebody who i could reach out to and ask that uh, yaar ye kaise chalta hai ye you know this is firmware how do you really do it and people were more than welcoming to answer those questions and i'm like okay very nice i have time they have time they are pretty okay to answer let me read a little more that is when i realized i uh, really like engineering i should have probably pursued it in electrical instead of computers <laughs> so um i think i well utilized my two years to understand a lot about the product and today as we speak i will not say that i can you know just make spin off a product like my team members but at least i understand a lot more i understand what's happening in the tech industry just not in what we are building or just in real estate i also i am able to weigh on the pros and cons of different technology uh, but uh, honestly for the first time i studied seriously i gave a lot of time to studying and understanding things every day because to me a lot of things were new uh, i understood the pcv but i did not understand what it takes to make it into a product uh, there in fact my entire team also was um, pretty supportive because i used to ask initially very lame questions that you know why does this ic go on this like this they're like mm, okay garima you know this is how it happens and i'd be like you know come online and show how you do the schematics and nice guys they would all show it to me so today i have that comfort i can say it i can myself tell you if you show me somebody's product i can tell acha this microcontroller has been used how it has been formed around but uh, only after so many years i realized that uh, should have just pursued a career in engineering to begin with it's pretty interesting <laughs> it can solve every problem even the problems you don't have well i i think every background helps right because you know your i guess your years of looking at uh, toiletries and and which ones work well which ones don't they give you a different perspective right. of of what me- how to measure different metrics that people don't really care about yeah which is what i think the facilities world does right i mean i don't actively think about you know how well is the temperature system working or or how are the plumbing lines working from right. a user perspective i think if i look at uh, at where people are most conscious about building systems it's the security yeah. you go to large malls and usually you you see that in the parking lot you see their cctv station you're like okay fine no yeah they have mm-hmm. all these cameras we are safe and secure any theft robbery we are fine right same level of control we don't just consciously think about okay how well are the systems functioning at the consumer level in fact himan you'll be surprised that uh, certain hotels in bombay that i had been to back then which is probably now 9 years 10 years back versus now then i used to be in oh wow what nice hotels will they sign up oyo 
because they are really posh they are really nice and now i go and order i'm like nothing is working yeah. how are you even sitting here <laughs> who's paying for these so <laughs> the entire perspective change to me is very interesting the other day i was telling one of my friend don't go to that mall nothing is working if something happens to you if there's a fire outage don't say that i didn't tell you no system is working there <laughs> so i think you start looking at things very differently when i look at a duct i am i'm amazed by a duct 10 years back i did not know what the hell was a duct so i i think perspectives really have changed <laughs> a lot <laughs> from very very diverse backgrounds and to top it i was also in fmcg which is all about you want to look nice you want to look healthy you want to look fresh yeah. no dark circles and here i am like but other drainage system nahi chalu hai so that maybe we should put up a controller there and start automating it uh, see the average aam janta like us don't want to see the kitchen of a restaurant especially if it's your favorite restaurant because If you find out what all things are done, you'll never eat there again. True, you know, true. Quite likely. I, I think you should avoid facilities rooms. <laughs> I think I should avoid dining out. Just eat at home <laughs> because now when I'm seeing, I uh, last year I went to a hotel and it was Christmas time. Beautiful decorations, and I went there. I'm like, your HVAC system is not working. Why are you putting decorations like this? What did you do? <laughs> and then I'm questioning myself. What is wrong with me? Because I used to really like that place. Okay. So if you go to a, a place where everything is working perfectly, do you take a selfie with the HVAC <laughs> system? No, I do. <laughs> I do actually. Off late, it is so funny. I <laughs> I have participated in a bunch of events, and they have happened at all the nice five star hotels. My first slide of all the presentation is. Since your BMS of this company is not working, this is how much you could have saved had you put a smart system in place. Because whenever I go, the first person that I meet is the facility guy. Do you have a BMS? Is it working? From how many years is it not working? So yeah. All right, BMSG. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so let's talk about the range of products because I've seen an evolution. More so for the last three years, but your journey has been longer than that. So, what is working really well for you today? Where are you headed? Uh, so, this company is seven years old now. Seven years back, we registered, and uh, the first set of product that we built, I would say, were very, very rudimentary. Uh, we used a technology which was not even used in buildings, and we were solving for very small use cases. Um, eventually, we also realized the kind of tech that we are picking up. and uh, we want to scale the solution if the problem is big if the problem is a building and not a zone it has to be scaled up what is it that we want to do differently we were not asking that question what to do differently in a product we were just going with the flow that okay you know energy management so energy management may what the moment we thought building management system the first question that we asked ourselves was but why do we want to recreate it there are probably five companies out there which make billions of dollars of revenues every year why do we want to recreate something that somebody's already done and that the then the answer after auditing almost 250 300 odd buildings was you don't want the systems to be wired you don't want a system to be restricted to a premise you don't want intelligence to be just somewhere in a building and nowhere outside and it's not even an intelligence it's just a program which was done at the inception of the building so you know let's get away with the wires let's have a cloud based system and let's have intelligence in everything that you make whether it's a hardware or it's a platform which is managing that hardware and with that thought we realize that the future is definitely wireless people are so comfortable with everything wireless uh, we've seen the evolution of uh, headphones becoming earpods so yeah, yeah. world is headed in a very different way so because headphones and earpods the technology that we first used was actually ble and then we were like you know this is very one to one in a building it's not going to work then something called ble mesh was released during 2017 18 we were like okay you know let's pick this up let's try it out so we again tried it out built up a product tested it we realized that again uh, the scale might really not work in kind of a building scenario it still is becoming very expensive and there are too many breakdowns in the connectivity it's still not there 
then we went back to some tried and tested wireless methods which building has there is a technology called a zigbee and lora which has been around for about 10 15 years when we went back to that then we question ourselves again but there are companies which have made it nothing has become mainstream um still we will try to build it out when we build it out we again test it so we love doing r and d for some reason uh we love building testing and scrapping it so once we scrapped it then one day all the team sat and we were like you know what is that wireless technology which is everywhere which everybody uses without thinking which is only present and you don't have to think about oh you know i'll have to put additional connectivity in a building of a bluetooth lora and all it's internet it's present everywhere every building has it be it a guest network or their own network from there the thought of using internet into the hardware came in and that is where we started working on the product where we were like you we are going to make the world's first internet enabled wireless controllers and a cloud native bms because again this is always a desktop application uh some people have it hybrid we wanted to keep it native because if you are comfortable doing financial transactions over a cloud uh building data is not even that important how much your financial transactions are so why not so we worked on this and then we developed an entire product suite which could cater to each and every aspect of a building operation which was on electricity so whether it was on and off whether it was controlling something whether it was just reading data from an equipment we build out everything but only over wifi as a technology and initially trust me it had a lot of friction from everywhere that we went to because people were like no this doesn't happen if this is not on premise we just can't use it but today um since we are talking about the products which have seen good traction in the market we have about 2200 of these devices deployed in the market um we cover wow. about 15 million square feet of an area in the market and this is what we've done in last 14 months congratulations <laughs> and, and i know that you have plans for you know all sorts of facilities right you're not limited to one particular deployment right? you can work for hotels you can deploy in commercial buildings residential <laughs> buildings right? so we can do it pretty much everywhere in fact uh, we recently got an order for the biggest hotel in bombay the biggest five star that is going to come up uh, we have a lot of malls that we are already doing office premises definitely they are um, uh, if i have to look at a graph they'll be the highest number in that graph where we've done residential a lot of luxury residential uh, they do ask for it because they want certain things to be integrated it could be a common light it could be common hvacs it could be even integrating the fire systems so for us everything which is electrical electromechanical is bms so whether it's fire it's water in fact very recently next to my house uh, where i stay in bombay we've just done a residential where we've done the pumping system so on the houses the water that comes in so that is the machinery which is maintaining and managing all of it and from here today we are still in commercial and a little in residential we are already working on a product which is catered to data centers and industries so because we see a lot of uh, traction in that buildings are very very important but uh, the kind of data that the demand for is much lower than a data center so if a building will have 5000 data points that they want to monitor um, an analogy is a data center is 50000 at a minimum and uh, they don't like lags no latencies because you can imagine if something is to happen and if aws is down for 2 minutes the kind of a outage it can cause so we are creating industrial grade systems for all the factories industries and data centers alike very cool and knowing you karima and i have also seen how your team has been growing over the past couple of years at least you have a nice culture of well this camaraderie for sure i can attest to that but there's also culture of innovation like you all continually file for patents so can you talk of how do you all innovate do you have a process uh, do you have a periodic thing like or is it random uh so i would say it's a lot of things for us um at enlight one thing that me and my co-founder and all the team members that we thought of this 
uh, one vision that we are very driven towards is to make this the best ever engineering company to have come out from India to be providing solutions globally. Like we take a lot of pride in being an engineering company. We don't say we are a building management or uh, we are serving real estate because today we are doing this. Tomorrow we want to do that a lot into automation. Uh, so with that, there was a discussion which used to happen with the team at some point that wouldn't it be nice just like all the other international peers that we have in automation. If you think of a Honeywell, which is in aerospace, defense, uh, building management, look at the number of patents that they file year on year. They have competitions inside them where people have to uh, write certain papers and then they are able to file for patents. So that I used to find very exciting that how do they even think of that? Uh, only to realize that people come up with anything and everything under the sun. Some make sense, some don't, but definitely some do make sense. So I think that was the starting point for all of us that when our peers are doing it and we are trying to do a lot of things in a differentiated way. So, but why not do something in a similar way? They are so much on innovation. And if this is what is going to drive us to become one of the best engineering companies, this was the first thought. But the second thought, I'll tell you, was uh, it was not even a thought. These are the customers. So customer would come back with a problem statement, which we had not introduced into the product. But you can't just create a product overnight. So then we took think of something and we'd be like, OK, you know, if we would tweak this, this would become a part of this product without having the need to introduce a new product. So when we started doing this, we realized after I think a good 11 or 12 months mm -hmm. that what we have, nobody is doing it that way. We've actually created something different. So um, we started internally reading, trying to read some patents. Now we were like, you know, we are not very sure. Let's engage somebody and ask that, you know, while we are saying we've done seven things differently, are we really sure about it? Because customers kept asking and we kept on integrating it into the product mm -hmm. rather than just say, OK, you know, I'm going to give you a new product to realize they were all noble creations. So today we hold uh, about four patents on our architecture. There are three new patents which are already underway. We've just made a new solution which is going to be released next month on which also we are filing a patent thanks to one of the customers again. We would made the solution differently. But uh, all the ask, the industry ask that the customer had, which is a very generic ask, every customer would have had that. Um, we'll be probably giving something which the customer is happy with and would also help us uh, get innovated. Uh, at the same time, I would give a lot to my team on this. Um, what One thing that I have always asked people in their interviews, do you like reading? And uh, when they would say yes, I would ask them what? Anybody who said a paper, white paper, I'm like, you are the guy. You are the person who needs to be in the team now <laughs> because work less for me. This is at least you've reduced my work. So a lot of times my team members would message me at night. Hey, read this paper. We can also do this and file a patent. I'm like, no, I'm, I really like these guys. At times those things are really random, but they will come up with the newest of the technologies. One of them came up with the technology is like it's only in US, but you know, we could really do it. I'm like, yeah, then probably we should. We'll at least make one product out of it, if nothing else. So People keep experimenting and uh, what we have always wanted here is a lot of culture of R&D. Um, if mm -hmm. somebody, because in a startup, one thing that you think about is that, you know, how much money can I spend on doing mm -hmm. R&D if the product is not there? Uh, not very proud to say it, but Enlight has done R&D for five years and has only started selling very recently in a full-fledged fashion. All we've done is put in a lot of time, effort and monetary aspects into building a product. But today, at least all of us feel very peaceful with it that, you know, we at least created something which works well and which works better. It is very cool. I'm so glad to hear this, that, you know, you have, your team has a culture of learning, of curiosity. And, you know, you experiment with various ways. It's not that, OK, let's take a problem and deliver the known solution. How can we make it better? Yeah. So to me, those are always going to be the foundational stages of anything innovative. And by that nature, it will turn into inventions. Absolutely. And uh, by the virtue of being in India, you also have to be mindful of the uh, affordability of what you create. Right. So um, 
I am very proud of my team members. Whenever they start something, they'll be like, you know, we'll deliver this, but this will be probably one fifth of whatever is there in the market. That's the kind of conviction that they have that, you know, we'll combine different things. So they look at different industries also. We generally don't look at BMS industry at all to create a product. We will look at every other industry. We will look at a SaaS platform in a financial transaction. We will look at a headset. We we'll look at a, a Bose specs with the, the audio in it. That's how we discovered the Bluetooth connectivity, how we could use it in a building while we were looking at Bose. So I think the team also looks at diverse set of solutions which are in the market, not for buildings. So I think that also has helped us create really really affordable solutions at the same time just not innovative yeah and those are constraints i mean a lot of people complain about cost that the cost is a limiting factor but now if you look at that constraint a bit differently it can explore opportunities for you absolutely and, and similarly you know what you're doing is cross pollination you're looking at other fields and seeing okay what has worked in those fields what are best practices that could apply in our domain and very rarely it's going to be, you know, you just take it exactly as it is and uh, it runs perfectly in your system. You will have to tweak it, you'll have to make a lot of uh, adaptations. Because, right. I mean, you stick with it and, you know, it's no wonder that you have so many products right now. <laughs> uh, over a course of seven years, we have created 27. Thankfully, only five were there in the market because we were wise enough to scrap the others. This is amazing, Garim. I know we can uh, continue talking all that, but maybe one last question for you. I mean, I know you have a fair amount of audience on LinkedIn. We have a number of founders that want to get into deep tech, into some of these areas that people don't think about. What are, let's say, some inspirations? What do you read more often uh, that you're like, hey, this is inspirational. This can expand your horizon so what would you recommend uh, so if it's about reading i actually read a lot i probably read everything under the sun which is not fiction so um and i have a liking for a lot of different products so because i like apple as a company i think i've read about 25 different books and watched documentaries on it because you want to understand what failed and what finally worked um, and when you go through the entire cycle of anything which happened in the real world or you look at a Nike uh, or you read a book like a habit forming product, you realize one thing uh, which is very true for deep tech. You never get it right the first time. And if you think you were right the first time, you're definitely wrong. <laughs> that just can't happen. Also, it requires a lot of perseverance uh, because deep tech takes a lot of gestation period to first culminate into a product. The ideation period is super, super long. And when it becomes a product, um, if you have created a category, um, a category creator by itself, it takes even longer to push. While it sounds very exciting, you know, uh, Tesla is a category creator or a Xerox was a category creator, but it really took long. And you have to be comfortable with it. You really need to be OK with Things are not going to work for the longest time. And uh, it's always it's never a sinusoidal curve in deep tech. Uh, when it comes to the customer taking your solution, it's always a hockey stick. It doesn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work, and it just works at some point. And you're like, oh, I don't, I didn't, I don't realize how did this happen, but I think this is how it is, because for the longest time you're just talking, you know, will somebody take it? What is wrong? What is not happening? And you start questioning did. First of all, did I choose the problem right? Because in deep tech, while deep tech is a very nice term to use and people say that, you know, I'm in deep tech, but what is it that you're solving for? Was it a problem to begin with, which required a deep tech? Because only then you can build the right solution. Otherwise, people end up creating wrapper services around some other technology, which is then very easy to copy. Or as I would say, it's uh, one update of an app away from your business model. Um, so be very sure about the problem that you're solving and then the solution. And um, I like to read about different businesses. I don't read about BMS at all. Maybe I read white papers, but I'm very intrigued and interested to know about every product under the sun. So you could ask me about anything in any part of the world which had happened or is happening from a healthcare industry um, to a pharma 
uh, to a financial to economics is huge interest for me so i keep reading about that and i think why i like doing that is that you can always connect the dots from somewhere and understand this is how it fits the bill into my company it could be in my product it could be in my culture it could be in the way i sell it could be in anything but you should have you have to expand your horizons you can't be i am bms i have to talk to people only in bms i have to read bms just talk to different people just don't talk to people in bms only talk to them in meetings understand their problems that is good enough because if you keep talking to them then you'll cater everything so much to them that you will not be able to innovate yeah. then there will be no deep tech it will be some kind of a tech which will be helping them very interesting garima i think on that note let's park our discussion i'm sure we can continue this much further ahead you've shared really a ton of information i mean i i have been noting many things you know why we were talking you know just a wealth of information has been shared both from a cultural perspective your own evolution uh, this this opportunity that we have in india and this is one sector which to me that was probably the biggest takeaway that it may appear unorganized it may appear messy but it does provide amazing opportunity and if you can cater to it there's a lot of innovations which will arise and of course uh, a lot of uh, hopefully financial success for you to also happen so hopefully hopefully for me too and i hope we see at least 200 more startups solving problems for the real estate it really has a lot of potential yeah, yeah truly you are solving for prop tech you know and i'm very very proud to be associated with you uh, with you with god of your entire team there so you know thank you for being connected thank you for joining me today thank you so much for this hemang and uh, thank you for always being a constant support to us